Welcome back. Ooh, welcome back, everyone. One of the things that you can be guaranteed in, in Thailand, particularly this venue, is a, is a nice lunch. I hope you enjoyed the lunch. Um, this afternoon, we have a tremendous uh, agenda, a buffet of uh, talent and engagement to, to offer. We have two presentations before the break, which are very practical in nature. Um, and after the break, we have a discussion uh, panel which is going to be a, a highly engaging experience as well. So lots to stay for. The end of the afternoon, prize draw. Just to remind you, there are some high-value items uh, which we will be drawing at the end of the afternoon. Please do stay until the end. And I think there might even be a glass of wine waiting for you if you'd like to join us for that. Whenever Hogan always has high hedonism scores, so I've learned to, to kind of go along with that. And uh, we support that with a glass of wine occasionally here or there. Great, so we move on, and, and in life it's, it's, it's always helpful to have someone who believes in you, and uh, even when things aren't partic particularly working very well, and uh, I'm about to introduce someone who really believes in, in Hogan, and um, I was delighted when Dr. Natavut uh, contacted Mentis as a already certified uh, practitioner with experience in Thailand, working with Pontai to use the tools uh, for assessment and development. So I'm grateful to him and to his talented team. Um, we're going to hear more about the practicalities. Um, and um, to introduce you to uh, Dr. Natavut, he's the managing director and founder of AGIS Consultancy, uh, Thailand's leading leadership development and human capital consulting firm. Uh, the clients for Agis in, are multinational and Thai companies, including GE, PTT, SCB, SEC, it's a lot of uh, three-letter abbreviations, Nestle, uh, Minor, we've heard from, Pepsi, and Pfizer. And he's also a frequent speaker on topics of leadership and strategic HR. Travels widely around Asia Pacific and beyond to deliver workshops. Um, w with uh, including the GE Leadership Center in Crontonville, very famous, Amex in Sydney, Singapore, Malaysia, and the Philippines. Uh, Dr. Natavut has worked in a very diverse and ch uh, challenging careers before uh, this current role of establishing Agis, um, including investment banking. Uh, he was COO for Merce Group in Thailand, the shipping and terminals company, and director for BMW Group in Thailand as well. Um, and his last position before setting up Agis was as the head of human capital consulting and the deputy managing director for Mercer in Thailand. Uh, in terms of credentials and academics, <sighs> wait for this, it's quite a list. It's quite a list of achievements here. So uh, a bachelor's uh, of science in engineering from Chulalongkorn University, um, MBA from the University of Colorado, uh, two executive programs, one with INSEAD and one with IMD, and if that's not enough, a DBA, a doctorate in business administration, uh, closer to home for me, Manchester Business School, which is a highly renowned uh, business school. Can you join me in welcoming uh, Dr. Natavut uh, to the conference? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Richard. Really lovely. I couldn't re recall that I write that introduction that long, you know. And I almost lose half of you already just uh, waiting for Richard to finish uh, introduce me. <laughs> Apologize for that. Okay, um, so what gonna be different this time? You know, I, I try to put my, and by the way, I'm not sure whether it's a good news or bad news for you, you know. I'm, I'm, I have no degree in psychology, right? So I tend to focus on practical thing and a lot of local practices, you know, and welcome question from you as well. Uh, so then maybe you just wonder, what is Agis? Okay, so basically, as uh, Richard mentions, I work around and, and start with Accenture and a, cu uh, a couple of business organizations and move back to Mercer once again. Uh, quite happy to see a lot of uh, my old colleague here in the room as well. But the thing is, what I found is I, I want to provide solutions, right? When you approach client with consulting practices, okay, you might miss something. When you start working with a client with uh, leadership development programs, 
something also missing as well. When you start using a lot of assessment, also maybe the whole picture is, is not clear, okay? So that's the idea behind why I just doing some weird stuff, quit my career with Mercer, right, and starting my own journey, right? I'm so lucky that within four years, working, setting up, running my own organizations, I gather along, you know, partner who really believe in similar models, right? Uh, on a consulting side, we work with RBL. Uh, we are exclusive partner in Thailand, you know. RBL, if you don't know the organization well, is a fork like Dev Orange, which is, has been named as a father of modern HR, Norm Smallwoods, right? And then we also work with uh, Blue Point Leadership, you know, they, this organization provide leadership uh, development for leading organizations, GE, Amex, you know, that kind of people. And also, I'm really glad that uh, we have uh, quite a healthy pro uh, relationship with Mentes, right? And then when Richard introduced me as uh, our strategic partner in Thailand, you know, we feel really proud because uh, since the time with Mercer, you know, I believe I'm uh, the one who really uh, proposed that maybe we need to starting with working with uh, Hawkins as an assessment, and then I'm not sure whether this fact is true or not, you know, but I'm the Thai. Uh, staff or Thai people who firstly certify with uh, Hawkins, which is we need to verify that fact, okay, later, okay? So then maybe three things that we want to take uh, next for the next 45 minutes, okay, which is quite a big topic, but I try my best, okay, because the problem with nice lunch is, you know, we can, I can easily lose you any moment, right? Sometimes, you know, beyond personality is your own personal limitations. If you feel that you have to go take a nap, just go for it. I do understand, <laughs> all right? Okay, the first one, what make a great leader? This is not the first time that you have been uh, challenged with this kind of topic, you know, maybe a hundred times already. But let's hear from another point of view, right? What is similarities? I just really like what Thomas mentions, you know. Leadership in the way is the old knowledge, 2,000 years old, right? And sometimes organizations love to invest a lot of time trying to perfect the old knowledge, just to realize that your new knowledge, your leadership differentiator is gone. Your competitor is just take away and running away with that. Let's hear from that perspective. Second one, why we are here, right? We are in the space of CEO, you know, top leader, HR, you know, we make things happen. What thing? We make organization capability happen, but how? Are you sure that the thing that you're doing in your organization is the right thing? You know, are we missing something? Let's quickly retouch on that point. The last thing, you know, as a practical consultant, you know, I would love to see things, make things happen, right? How, from my experience, you know, working with the world leading organizations and similar like-minded, you know, ensure that your organization can take things forward, right? Not just another community models, another leadership development programs, you know, what missing in that ingredients? Let's find out, okay? The first one, Right? If you track, you know, the stock markets, the performance of stock markets, right? In the past, let's start with 1970 years till, you know, today, right? Someone tried to measure the correlations, meaning that what if, you know, in which degree that the past performance predict the future's performance of your organizations, right? And then the outcome is something that looks like this, right? The question that your track records is indicate how well you're gonna do in the futures. Your track record meaning performance indicators, right? In the past, the correlation is really high. But in the present day, moment day, it's not so much. Why? Okay, what is missing in here? Okay, investor these days looking into your ability to create a futures, not just your past record anymore. So who in the position to create the futures for your organizations is your leader. It's HR as well to make sure that that organization capability is exists in your organizations, right? Not the past record anymore, right? So that's even put the role of leadership in more significant manner, okay? So when you're talking about, okay, give me some trend, right? You just expect to, to have a come into the events, into the submit, right? You expect to come back with some kind of latest thought in terms of leader. Well, perhaps something is not really, you know, 
that's out of the world trends, you know, still all same stuff. You know, we're looking at two things, right? The first thing is leader and leadership. What is the similarity and differences? The second one is inside and outside, okay? Let's explore it a little bit further. When you talk about leaders, there's two familiar names, I mean faces here, right? On the right, some, anybody know these gentlemen, right? The late Steve Jobs, right? On the right, I mean on the left, right? It's not so obvious. You spot anyone that you know? Who? Bill Gates, right? This is teenagers that look like he's still living with uh, uh, his mom and dad in the garage or something like that. He's look really young and junior, okay? What in it with this light, right? The blue line represents the stock price of Apple. Okay, sometime in 2009, you see a big dip in Apple stock price. What happens in that year? Can you guess? Yep, uh, Steve Jobs said that he take a medical leave, right, for unknown periods, right? And stock markets answer, they're just selling Apple stock and everything is going down from that point onward, right? What happened to Microsoft? The, by the way, the yellow light is represent Microsoft. Sometime in 2000s, Bill Gates said that, okay, um, retire from the active and operation duties. I'm gonna do some kind of philanthropy and supervise on the high level. What happens? Basically, nothing happens, okay? What I'm trying to say in here, okay? What uh, Apple's have is Steve in that moment, right? With Apple without Steve is, not gonna be the same apples, right? So the key message is in organizations, right, if you start from leader and leadership and inside and outside, if your organization managed to come up with the good leaders, very capable, inside organization know him well, right? Everybody respect him internally. Congratulations, you have competence leader within your organizations, right? But what if you have one that one leaders? Outside organization is also believe that he is a good one, right? You have celebrity leader, the kind of uh, the press and media chasing him around and are for his insight, right? Exceptional organization is move away from leader to leadership. The building system, right? That's go beyond individuals. And then you have a good leadership system in place. Right. If that system is known within the organization, inside organizations, then you have a good leadership system. But what if the outside organization also know that your organization is terrific, excellent in building leadership system, right? In the end, you get a leadership brand. And that's my friend, you know, a lot of investors, a lot of your new talents want to stay with you because they know when they join your organization, it's beyond compensations. It's beyond, you know, the end of the month, I get this much, right? This is my future. This is my investment. This is my brand, okay? So the purpose here is how can we move away from leader and trying to come up with a system that build a next new generation of leader and from inside into the outside, okay? So that's the challenge, isn't it? Easier said than done, for sure, okay? So what if, you know, what I like about Thomas' presentation is, this is something that stuck with me all along. You know, every time when I meet with the clients, uh, they ask, okay, doctor, can you help me design the leadership development programs, okay? Just say, okay, what you actually believe in terms of your leadership capabilities is turned out to be like, everything is look the same to me. How can you explain to me that organization in banking industry, telecom, you know, you want the same formula of the leader, something must be missing, right? And then that kind of thoughts, really glad that uh, one of our partners, RBL, Deb Orich, uh, has been named as the father of modern HR, struggling with him as well, right? And at the end, as a professor from Michigan, Michigan School of Business, he come up with the book called Leadership Codes. Basically, in this book, you know, he trying to explain that Let's start with the basic stuff. You also require that leadership capabilities. Other organization is also require the same uh, leadership capabilities. Let's get this thing done. So then we can move on into something that differentiates us between two organizations or even more, okay? Since I cannot pay for his uh, time to come here, so I 
thing that you, I hope you don't mind if I have a clip uh, that allow him to explain, you know, what is the five domain that he believes that leader in organization need to have these uh, capabilities, okay? If you got ready, please. Hi, I'm Dave Ulrich. I'm one of the three co-authors of the book, Leadership Code. We appreciate your time in listening to these ideas and hope they're as helpful to you as they have been to us. We began the discussion of Leadership Code with a very simple question. What makes an effective leader? What a great question. We have to confess, we're not the first person to ask that question. In fact, when we got on Google and we Googled the term leader and leadership, we got 20 to 30 million hits. We're way down the line in asking that question. So we decided to do something a little different. Instead of coming up with a whole new theory of leadership, we wanted to look at what was out there and find out, are there some major common themes that we can synthesize and integrate that describes and answers the question, what makes an effective leader? So we used a methodology that was really, really simple. We went to about 15 or 20 people who are, we think, the thought leaders in leadership. These are folks who've written four or five books each. They've done leadership 360s for 15 to 20 years. They're people you would probably know. I won't list them all for the embarrassment of missing some that we went to. But these are the best we know. We asked them how many 360s they've done in their careers. The sum of that was over 2 million. Then we asked them two questions. Question one, what percent of successful leadership in your experience is basically the same stuff? All leaders everywhere, top to bottom, big companies, small companies, publicly traded, privately held, global, domestic, what, com what are the central core things that every leader everywhere must be able to know and do? When we asked the percent of what that should be, what we found was a fascinating response. It ranged from 50 to 85%. Some said 50% is unique. Some said 15% is unique. Some said 50% is the same. Some said 85% is the same. Our take is 60 to 70%. 60 to 70% of what any leader anywhere has to know and do is the same basic stuff. Question two, what is it? And these time our thought leader colleagues recommended their books. So we looked at their books. We looked at competency models from other firms. We combed the literature and we tried to say, what makes an effective leader? What is that core common set of stuff that every leader everywhere has got to do? We called that the leadership code. The code is the basics, the code book, the absolute core of what leadership is about. As we did that research, we found there were five things. If you think four corners of a sheet of paper and then a middle circle, one corner of the sheet of paper is a leader has to be a strategist. If you want to be an effective leader, you have to have a point of view about where your unit is going. At the top of the company, that's the whole enterprise. In a functional unit, it's your function. In a team, in an organization, it's your team. But you have to have a position about where you want your organization to go as you go forward. Second is you have to be an executor. You have to be somebody who's able to get work done, who has accountability, discipline, and the ability to execute and make sure that things are done and done well. On the other corner of the sheet of paper is you have to be a talent manager. Leaders, by definition, work with people. They engage them, they connect with them, they work with them, they communicate with them, and they help people feel like they're part of a good team. At the top corner of the circle, the fourth piece, is you have to be a human capital developer. You have to be somebody who builds the next generation in the organization. You have to be able to map the workforce, create a firm brand, and figure out what the talent is that needs to be there in the future. Four roles of leadership, strategist, where are we going? Executor, how do we get there? Talent manager, who goes with us? And human capital, capital developer, who stays when we're gone? What we discovered is most leaders are predisposed to one of those four. Most leaders kind of have a natural act. I like being a strategist and figuring out the future. I like being a talent manager and working with other people. I like being an executor and getting things done. But then what we discovered in the middle is that there's a core factor that every leader has to master. We call that personal proficiency. It's not a role, it's a set of personal competencies that allow you to be trusted by those you lead. 
Personal proficiency deals with insights about yourself, with your ability to know yourself, to learn, to have integrity, to have emotional intelligence, to exercise good judgment. That's it. We think there's a code book of leadership, a strategist, an executor, a talent manager, a human capital developer, and personal proficiency that allows you to connect with others. That's this book. It's actually a very simple book. If you want to be an effective leader, here's what you must know and what you must do. And you look at where your strengths are. And so as we drafted this book and we looked at this massive leadership work, we begin to identify four or five or six things in each of those areas that will help you be a more effective leader. Now, one of the things that we think is always helpful is looking at the leadership mirror. How do I rank? How do I rate? So we've got a survey online. On that survey, you can score yourself and do a self-assessment. And even better, you can begin to get data from others. How do others see me as a strategist, an executor, a human capital developer, or a talent manager? And based on that information, I can begin to make changes and improve my leadership. The purpose of this book is very simple. If you want to be a more effective leader. Okay. All right. Just thank you, Kundev. This is not probably the right timing. Should I, like, otherwise my boss going to upset me with, uh, when he look at that clips. A couple of things that I would like to, to strengthen, you know, or wrap up from my experience as well. And also, hopefully, it fits nicely, nicely with uh, Hokan today. Uh, you hear from their personal proficiency, right? And that's, you know, the tools like Hokan's really help. You, know, you need to understand personality of people you get on board, right? And more, important, more, more importantly, what I found is many organizations, you know, you have no idea, basically. You're indifferent about, okay, what kind of person that you want uh, that talent into your organizations. That's really risky, okay? At least, you know, as a leader in your organizations, as a HR, you need to make it different, okay? What kind of leader that I want, you know? And then you have a tool that helps you to predict, you know, or make sure that you get the right people on board. But it's not another way around, you know? The tool itself, not going to bring values if you don't really know what kind of personality that you want in your organizations. Second learning point is we do a lot of assessment. You know, it's by the way, it's a 360, right? Which is by the way, you know, in many clients, it fit very really well with uh, Hogan, uh, you know, model as well. Okay, and what we found is organization is sometimes it's come up with something very really interesting. Some organization is really believe that, okay, this certain type of personalities, this certain type of, you know, uh, school that I want to get my ta talent on board, right? And at the end, you end up with a pool of talent that perhaps really strong under the domain of strategies. But we can guess what, you know, what happened is CEO is screaming for the outcome, the result, where's my bottom line, where's my market share, right? Shouldn't be surprised because Without the indicators, without, you know, being different in terms of personality, the chance is your organization might end up with the similar personalities, and that's very really risky. On the other hand, you know, we also find organization with a bunch of executors, really good at uh, dealing, you know, bring the values and bottom line and market share, but I will be really scary, you know, if I be that CEO in that organization because no one taking care of the future direction. Okay, so once again, you know, uh, personality matters, and then, you know, you can work with other assessment as well just to try and understand uh, where the strength of your organization and weaknesses is. Okay, personal proficiency strategies, and all four. All right. But what Dave also mentioned is, come on, this is just 60% of the whole game. Right? What organizations, most organizations missing is, how about the rest? The rest is what we call leadership differentiators. Not so many organizations really look into that. When I mentioned that, when I look at leadership development program for many organi organizations and requests, right, what I found out is the request is the same. And even more, you know, we just asked, like, can you give us the competency models, leadership models, so then we can map with the domain. And many times, you know, it's looked the same among different industry or even within your own industry and your, your competitors. 
So that's really scary, it's meaning that when I start to show your CEO with, okay, let me start by showing you a clip. This is what you promised to your customer, right? You promised this, 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 and that. And please connect the dot for me that whatever the promise, the branding that you want to make with your clients is reflected like somehow in the process of talent development programs. The scary part is it's missing. So that means you promise something, but it's not there, right? And then I think we all can relate with the organizations who sell product and services that really fail to deliver what they promise and what that makes us feel about that, okay? So the idea is, okay, let's talk about leadership differentiators, okay? If your organization is not starting the process already, perhaps let's tag along and, and just take a look at the process of trying to come up with the understanding of leadership differentiators, okay? So typically, this is what happens in organizations, right? Every year, we crazy about strategies, the whole bunch of uh, C-suite uh, take a retreat somewhere with a fancy hotel, right? And come back with, you know, this is the best idea in the world, you know, we manage to come up with the new strategies, right? And the process is go like this. When they come back, everybody's waiting, like, what is a new announcement? And they always say something like, here is our new strategies. Here, what happens? You still live with the same level of capabilities. There's no process there, right? And then lead into actions, and then people screaming is, where is my new outcome? Where's my new out result, right? I haven't seen it yet. Of course, you won't see it yet, right? Because the thing that you need to consider is, it's not just about strategies, but the whole process of trying to identify the new level of capabilities, and that lead into actions, and that the new out outcome, and the new result. And HR cannot do it alone. The organization needs to be able to synchronize, right? This is how I see the futures. This is the process that helped me to make it happen. This is the way that uh, I can be sure that the outcome is there, the action is there, and you know, then I get the, the result that I want, okay? We all feel familiar with the promises, right? Every organization that you represent, you have firm brand, right? And then many times, you know, uh, we hope that our employees, smart employees, living with our promises. But many times it's not the case, right? What we promise and the actions from our employee and the outcome that ex our customer has been experienced might be two different things, okay? I just have some example for you. Just come on, this is afternoon session anyway, right? It's going to be really boring just listen to me all, all the time. But this is... The case that I want to show it to you that promise is promise, but let's hear from the customer as well. Okay, the question is, some people start smiling already when I just so show, you know, United. I haven't said anything yet, right? What comes to your mind when, you know, you see this kind of logo and symbol? That's okay, keep it to yourself. So this is the promise that uh, United make, right, to the wider audience and potential target customer. If you're ready, please run the clips. is up to you. There's one airline that can take you there. United. It's time to fly. Is that the same experience that you experienced when flying United as well? No? Yes? Maybe? I'm not sure. Okay. But there's one customer, right? If he fly United. And he experienced something. And he gets frustrated, right? And at the end, because what 
Judah the promise, and what he experienced is different, okay? So this guy is a musician, so like what all the musicians has done really well, right? When he gets upset, upset, he writes a song, and this is the song about United. Let's take a look at what, he, what his message is to United. His name is Dave. I flew United Airlines on my way to Nebraska. The plane departed Halifax, connecting in Chicago's old air. While on the ground, a passenger said from the seat behind me, they're throwing guitars out there. Band and I exchanged a look best described as terror at the action on the tarmac and knowing whose projectiles these would be. So before I left Chicago, I alerted three employees who showed complete indifference towards me. When we landed in I confirmed what I suspected Mike Taylor had been the victim Of a vicious act of malice at old air And so began a year-long saga Of past the buck, don't ask me And I'm sorry, sir, your claim can go nowhere United Okay, you got a message, right? The first day when uh, Dave, uh, you know, released his clip, of course, in YouTube, uh, today, I think, first week, you know, about 200,000 views. You know, within a month, you know, it's about 5 million views. But it, interestingly, you know, uh, the thing is, within the first two weeks, United has lost about a billion in terms of stock, stock value price because of this clip alone, right? So the question is, we keep debating about leadership development, you know, differentiators and so forth. But the real stuff is out there, right? Investor is chasing, customer is complaining, and your competitor is chasing you and beating you, right? So then we need to be a little bit more careful in terms of, okay, our investment in terms of leadership capabilities, right? Of course, differentiators and capability is, is not the easy thing to to defy or even make it happen, right? Organization capabilities, you need the whole system, which is, I think, you know, we has listened to a lot of uh, speakers already. We need the cultures, okay? What is the organization cultures to make this happen? Do you have system in place, right? To make sure that whatever the alignment is, the new strategy directions, you know, you have the system in place to make it happen, not just at the le leadership level only, you know, but employee level as well, down to the behaviors that your customer can experience, right? Competency and skill, okay? Every time when we invest in leadership development, every time when we invest in the wrong stuff, you know, that's really cost money, right? And wrong programs, okay? And business process to, take that, to make that happen, okay? So that's not easy, I got that, you know, but we need to start from somewhere, okay? Think about exceptional organizations, Google, just a logo, just a name, you know, that conveys certain message and image to us. Something like this, right? People, new grads, your talents, you know, crazy to work with Google. Why? Right? E gears, you know, perhaps nothing fancy, but we can expect expect the same stuff time and time again. Apples, you know, and by the way, anybody get iPhone 10 already? Probably not, right? It's called 10, not X, I guess. Okay, Apple, you know, got something like this. At that time, when Apple started Apple Retail, 
All the smart people just, just you know, uh, tease the apples because you are totally, you know, get into the wrong direction. The smart way to do is go online, right? Think about Dell, think about Gateway, you know. They just kill all the logistics and, you know, facility and infrastructures. But Apple just said that, okay, by the way, I think what we sell is beyond our products and software. We sell experience. And how can we just let, you know, third party to control the experience with our clients at the end of the value chain? It doesn't make sense. So that's why Apple started doing Apple retail. And then, you know, as when people, many people just mentioned that this is one of the smartest thing that uh, any business can uh, make decision on, right? So the key message is, you know, it's a strong connection with what you believe, your organization capabilities, and your staff behavior. And if you master that, okay, your, few, your organization can manage to come up with a, a strong leadership system, okay? Organization in our structures, think about leading organizations that we know, right? They stand, stand for something that we're all familiar with. The question is, how about your organizations? Think beyond typical leadership codes, five domains, boring, yes, similar stuff, yes, 2,000 years old, yes, right? But what difference, what makes difference, your organization different from the rest? Okay, if your organization managed to identify that and has this system in place, you know, to make sure that it's conveying to down to the em employee levels, behavior, and then, you know, you have a strong future. And if your leadership development program fail to do that, okay, that means you also fail as well, right? Because I just happened to, to run a two-day session, you know, uh, off-site. And we use 360s, we use Hawkins, right? And at the end, from the group of new talent of 15, we do a post uh, 360 once again, and by the way, we use a leadership course. And as the people, you know, as a person who engaged with this group for over a year, of course, I, I really excited to see, you know, that's the indicator point that, okay, all the 360 is have a big jump and improvement, so I can brag uh, back into the organizations and perhaps sell some more work with that organizations. But it's not the case, okay, which is, it's take me a while before I digest information and do understand what's going on. About 40% of the people in that program, you know, obvious improvement in all areas, right? And by the way, we use a lot of Hogan as well. Obvious improvements, right? 60%, you know, indifferent, somewhat improved, you know, at the same level, certain rate group is improved. About 10% is no improved at all, really depressing. And then it's come down to the, the, the question that, it's not about the skill, isn't it? Okay, when you look at the people who somewhat improve, you know, it's not because of lack of skill, but what become, become, become really clearly is lack of will to try and test and do what we learn in class. Think about, you know, we keep talking about doing coaching, new managers, new trends, you're supposed to do coaching, you know all the fancy word and all the process, but I don't want to do it. I, I, I can't stand to face with my stuff, right? There's only one version of me being tough and beat for the outcome. It's really difficult for me to change my behavior. So that's, you know, hit back really hard that, you know, it's any leadership development program, if you really want to see behavior, there should be a mechanism behind. You cannot rely on that a couple of fancy facilitators to make that happen. Okay, just want to share with you. Make, make it real, okay? In the end, there's no magic formulas, right? The peak performance, you know, in our own versions coming from three uh, big domains, right? Competence, commitments, and business contributions. Why? Think about it, right? If you have competence stuff, barely commit, but no business outcome, what happens? A bunch of hopeless, right, doing it for fun, you know, but no real business impact. You can say, your organization cannot survive. Another scenario, barely commit, right? Have some competence, but I mean, contributions, maybe for today, but competency in the future is in questions. You're happy today, right? How about futures? You, don't you know like what your computer is doing and getting busy at night? The last scenario is you have competent stuff with a strong business contributions, but no real commitment to your organization. 
and your recruitment manager is going to be really busy, right? Trying to fill in, you know, the new people. Okay, so at the end, you know, you need all three to come along together. And the good news is, you know, congratulations, you come into the right place. Richard, I think Hogan is a, a great tool, basically. You know, if you really know Hogan, and if you really know how to use it well, right, it gives you indicators, the right competency. We hear about from Mercer, I mean, and also uh, from Miner as well, okay. It's up to you once again. Another key message is many organizations approach, you know, the magic formula with indifference perspective, which is, I think, is really wrong. You, know, you need to be particular. You need to be different, like what I want, what kind of competency, what kind of skill that I want, right? Be beyond that as well, commitment. Do you know what they value, right? The motives and values, right? If you can match that, the chance is, like what we heard from another speaker, the tendency is they will stay with you a little bit longer periods, right, and also contributions. And all in all, you know, it's combined to a peak performance for your organizations, right? Initially, I planned to end my presentation with uh, the last slide, but since I think that a lot of practitioner, practitioners in this room, you know, I just want to share with you the real case that we wrote out with uh, one of the, the Thai clients in, 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 of course, in Thailand, right? Uh, another thing that I want, want to stress is Hokan is over the years, as I mentioned, I certified since 2011. What I see a big improvement is the quality of Thai translation is there. Okay, perhaps not 100%, but 90%, 95% is there. And when we use it with, in this case, that enterprise, the client is feel like comfortable somewhat, right? That okay, we are not just throwing jargons and out of the world words, you know, to them, right? So this is this assignment is among like the biggest uh, assessment center in Thailand. You know, we basically CEO have want to learn a little bit more about. Okay, I want to know my team, right? Executive and N minus one, two and three. That's what he she want to know. And then the assignment also she want us to identify the successor. And then we run a big scale assessment, and then we decide to go with Hawkins because we really believe in the system as well. And after, you know, a big effort in terms of assessment, and this is over nearly 100 people. So this is just to sum every level together. If you know a little bit about Hogan, right? If you're not, just contact me <laughs> or Richard, right? Basically, like, you keep hearing about three assessment, which is, you know, uh, people tend to use very frequent with Hogan's. MVPI stand for motive values, right? And, and sometimes they call insight. Right? People need insight, you know, to start, uh, you know, doing some work and contribute and engage and so forth. SDS is development survey. Sometimes we call it dark side, right? Under stress, you know, certain behavior has been emerged. And the last one is uh, personalities uh, inventories, right? Hogan HPI, right? For this group of new leader for this organization, this is the message. And to me, it's really risky. You know, I have to make pre presentations to a board of directors with hundreds of people. You know, and then I crying for like, can I have a word with president first before we go with the big audience? The answer is no. She's so busy. So you know, imagine you know a big conference. Uh, people want to hear the outcome from assessment. Okay, what is the future of our, our organization is going to be? And then this slide is showing up, okay? And the message is something like this, okay? Your organization, sorry to say, is in the trouble. Why? When we look at HPI, let's start with this. No one wants to step up. Ambition is really low. Either your organization system is something wrong, compensation is wrong, or they say that when they look up, you know, I don't want to be my boss. Maybe it's too busy, you know, a lot of politics issues, you know, I don't want to step up. That's really clear, right? And then another thing is, you know, and this organization is really strong in terms of securities and science, right? Everything is take time. People hold on into what I know. They're resistant to change as well, right? So that's the, the issue to other organizations. And HDS also pointed out that if there's an issue in our organizations, people moving away, we not talk to each other. 
either I move back to my office, you know, either I just shut down my communications. So obviously, three things that we can find out for this, you know, the whole exercise, right? People don't want to step up, organization have a communication issues, and then you focus on the wrong thing. Imagine 100 people and then stand up, you know, president is fair enough, smart lady, she embraced it, you know, she get the message right away, and then, okay, let's focus on what priorities. Okay, so basically, you know, I end up my presentation with the same old slide, right? That's okay, magic formula is, there's no such, such thing as a for magic formula, but there's some kind of framework that you quite can follow, and then, you know, but the biggest question is, what is your versions of leadership differentiators, and whether or not you have a process to make that happen or not, okay? I end my presentation, the last slide. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you so much indeed, uh, Dr. Natavit, and really a fascinating presentation, actually. I learned a lot from that. Uh, you will be joining the speaker panel, yeah. uh, so if we could hold over some yeah, questions for that, yep. would that be okay in the of interest course. of time? Yeah, but thank you so much yep. indeed, yeah. Um, so.